Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Mess. So, today we're going to continue the series. Is that an analog in your pocket? Are you just happy to see me? And Merry Christmas Eve. Screen filters are here with the Analog OS 2.0 update. Analog promised us this would be here by Christmas, and they definitely filled our stockings because the 2.0 OS is here, bringing in some Sony Trinitron filters and some promise for more fun things in the future. Before we get too far involved, though, do me a huge favor. Go down below, hit like, and subscribe, and ring that notification bell. It definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But hopefully, everyone's having a great Christmas Eve. I found some spare time today to get this video out to you guys. But this has been one of the most requested features for Analog Pocket under OpenFPGA. Different screen filtration filters have been available on the cartridge port, but for the longest time, if you wanted to play anything on OpenFPGA, you just got the HDMI output and that was it. I'm playing Capcom CPS 2 right here with Street Fighter Alpha 2, and you can see we have some really nice scan lines up on the screen. Now to get this, you just need to pop over to Analog's website and you'll see the 2.0 firmware is here. I'm going to give you an install guide to explain how to get this onto your pocket, but if you don't need that, you want to go to like minute 345 or so to get to the actual usage and what these screen filters do. We'll go ahead and download the firmware, so we'll have that for just a moment. But we want to go over all the release notes to see what Analog gave us this Christmas, because that's always the fun part, seeing what the new operating system firmware is going to provide. Now you're going to get a little bit of a bump on the Game Boy side. It's got custom palettes, but that's going to be on the cartridge port. The big addition here is going to be under OpenFPGA, because the framework's been updated to 2.0, and that's going to unlock CRT Trinitron mode. Now there can be more modes added, but that's going to come down to the individual core makers, they're going to have to update this to be able to take advantage of some of the other features. I'm sure in January and February, you're going to be seeing a lot of updates. You also get 8-bit Doe M30 dongle support and an issue with aspect ratios under OpenFPGA that I honestly never noticed. Now you'll see here, this is how you install the firmware. We're going to have pocket firmware one underscore one dot bin. This is from my previous video to go to 1.2, but I'm reusing the footage because it is Christmas Eve, so this way I can kind of be more efficient. Once you download the 2.0 firmware, make sure that there's no other pocket firmwares on the root of your SD card where you keep all your open FPGA stuff. You're going to copy over the 2.0 firmware and you're going to paste it into the root directory of your analog pocket SD card. That is all you need to do to prepare this to actually update. You can use Pocket Updater as well, and that will also download the newest firmware, but because this just came out today, and I'm not sure if it's caught up with it yet, you might just want to go to Analog's website and do it for yourself, but either way, these should work moving forward outside of maybe today you might want to grab that download over on the Analog's website. But once you have all of that taken care of, maybe it's a good time to update your ROMs and everything in OpenFPGA as well with Downloader. And if you don't know where this piece of software is, just Google it, you will find it perfectly fine. Once you have the 2.0 firmware on the root of your micro SD card, all you're going to do is pop that back into your analog pocket and go ahead and turn it on. You're going to see a percentage bar. You have to wait for that to get to 100%. But do be aware this also requires a dock update. So the first time you dock your analog pocket, you're going to see an upgrading dock icon as well. Both of these for me this morning took about three and a half minutes. Dock was closer to four. So just be patient and make sure you are plugged into wall power. Don't do this on a battery, especially if it's 50% or less. But moving right over into Super Mario World, this is what we were used to seeing on the analog pocket before we got the 2.0 firmware upgrade. And now we have those Sony Trinitron shadow masks as well as scan lines and different settings we can have for them. So all you need to do is go into the core settings and at the top of the screen now you're going to see display mode. This is where you're going to find everything you need here. If you click into display mode, you're going to find two toggleable options, normal or CRT Trinitron. If you want to reset everything to default, you can, but if you go ahead and select CRT Trinitron, you're going to see that you get all of the shadow masks over the screen and it's going to shrink down a little bit. You can increase the size of this. You just need to go into the menu, go to size and go to integer plus. I do believe this is changing the integer scale ever so slightly and it might be cropping it. I'd have to do some more examination, but for full screen on the dock, this is probably what you're going to want to be using. And now we have these awesome scan lines over top Super Mario World and they look spectacular. But let's move over to something like Neo Geo, something I love more than any other console around. 
Once you get to integer plus, you're going to see that we have different options for aperture grills and scan lines. Aperture grills more something like a VGA monitor where a 240p CRT like a Trinitron is just going to have these scan lines that you're seeing on the screen here, but it does lend a really nice look to something like The Last Blade 2. And if you've never played this game before, definitely check it out. It's one of the best fighting games on the Neo Geo ever made by SNK. It is just an outstanding franchise, but this does look good with those scan lines on. We have so many different options in here. This is what it's going to look like with everything off. You don't need to use any of these filters and sometimes you may find that one game looks really good with the filters and another game you prefer them off. The great thing is it's so quick to change these filters within the core menu you're gonna have an absolutely good time. If we pop back in and we go over into mode settings let's go from scan lines into something like a fine aperture grill. There's two different ways that televisions would draw images back in the day. You would have something like a scan line raster image but you'd also have these aperture grills that were popular on some monitors. Monitors. This is going to be a completely different look than scan lines and honestly at least in this sunset area in the last blade 2 I find it to actually be a little bit heavy-handed That's not a knock on the filter, but if we pop back over to scan lines It's just such a better look This is going to be game to game system to system and even level to level dependent on what you think works But the great part is we have all of these options now including turning them off And that's the nice thing about these being toggleable and so quick in between rounds You could totally just switch up what you want to look at there's so many different ways that you can do this but the great part is we now have the option in and of itself in open fpga now if we go into mode settings here look at the background in mario you'll see we have the medium aperture grill if you go to a fine aperture grill it definitely increases what you see scan lines only and then from there you can do hard edges soft edges and heavy scan lines just play around with these and give them a go and see what looks good to you there is no one right answer as to what you should be doing this is 100 percent your prerogative what looks good and do be aware that some of the cores right now they just don't seem to work if you go into game boy advance and into display modes there is no option for that crt trinitron filtration whatsoever but let's move over to alpha 2 again this was the one example that i thought looked really good no matter how you did it obviously we have no screen filters on right now and we're quickly going to move over into a round where we're going to pop them on and that's the nice thing this is so quick and efficient you can just do whatever you want and you can get right back into your game so we're going to go scan lines only and we're going to have hard edges you will see now that this screen is shrunk down don't forget you always need to go into size and go to integer plus when you turn these on by default it's going to shrink the screen down and i think this looks like a very nice image with the scan lines on but if you don't like the scan lines, you can go to the aperture grill and you can kind of mix or match. In the round here against Zangief, it just kind of makes that screen in the back showing those Russian letters a little bit softer and it looks a little bit closer to arcades. Most of these games on the arcade side would have run on 15 kilohertz monitors, so I would recommend using these scan lines over the kind of shadow mask or aperture grills. But look at the exhaust there on the jet. You can see the lines through it, and it has a little bit of an illusion breaking flicker here without those scan lines on. There's certain features in 2D games that are just going to look better when they actually are on a CRT monitor. So having these scan lines over top kind of actually mellows the image out and makes it seem closer to what it really would be in real life. Now, unfortunately, the one thing that didn't come in 2.0 was DAC support. There is still no efficient way to get your analog pocket on the dock over to a CRT television but honestly scan lines are here aperture grills are here and that is a christmas gift in and of itself so if you follow this guide you'll be playing with it on christmas eve and you can pop your analog pocket open on christmas morning and get some scan line goodness and i'm sure a lot of people are going to be getting pockets under the tree so if you find this video on the 25th or 26th and you need any help leave me a comment down below and i'll see what i can do but it's Christmas Eve and Analog gave everyone an early Christmas gift with the 2.0 OS for Open FPJ and Analog Pocket. Hope everyone's having a great holiday so far. Tell me what you hope to get for Christmas down below and I will see you guys next time. I'm going back to drinking my Bloody Mary. Bye bye.